Hey there, in this video, I'm going to make this cool looking UI. Now here I am in my project directory and I'm going to create another project and call it clock app. Now as Flutter creates the project, let me just show you the completed version of the app. Here you can see that we have customized tabs at the top. At the bottom we have a flat button and a floating action button. And in the center is the main attraction, this cool king analog clock. Then on the next tab we have a simple layout which comprises of a container, then it has a column, then that column has a row and a list view, and then that row again has two children. This graph that you see here is made using custom painter. In fact, we're gonna make use of custom painter a lot in this video. Alright, so let's begin. So here I am inside of VS Code, and I've got my project completely built. Firstly, I'm gonna remove everything from our main dot dot. Now remember, this video is going to be divided in two parts. In the first part, we simply make the clock and in the second one, we're going to complete the entire layout. Now, I'm not going to make the entire clock, otherwise the tutorial would be an hour long. And this is a design tutorial, so we're going to import some code. So come over to Google and simply search analog clock in Flutter. And it's going to take you to this Medium article by Philip Okuwanko. This article is divided into four different parts where he works on different parts of the clock. You can read it to know more. Anyways, we are interested in the code. So I'm going to click on the article and just find the github snippet and go to his profile. So at the top you can see this clock repository. Just open it and go to its lib folder. And there we go. Now here you can see that we have 9 different files. Each contains code for different parts of the clock. So you could actually clone his repository or download it as a zip. Now since I have already made my project so instead of cloning the repository I'm rather going to simply download it. And after downloading, all you have to do is go into the lib folder, copy all the files and paste them inside of your app's lib folder. And that's it. Now I'm going to go back to VS Code and you can see that we have several errors here. Well, that's because of the incorrect package name at the top here. So you could either remove the package name or write your current package name like that. I'm just going to remove the package name from here. Then I'm going to go into clock.dart and do the same. Alright, now that I have removed the package name from every files, there are no more errors left and there should be none in your projects as well. Now let's run this and see what kind of a clock do we have. So I'm going to write flutter run and execute it. Alright, now the app has launched and as you can see that we have a very basic clock and to convert it into our desired clock, we're going to have to go a long long way. Now before making any changes, let me first explain or read the code out for you. In here you can see that we have 8 different files responsible for making the clock excluding the main dot dot. So if you go into main dot dot, you can see that we have this widget called clock and then there are some values being passed to it. Eventually we're gonna get rid of each one of those values because we won't need them. Anyways, you can try tweaking these values to see what each one of them does. For example, if you set show bells and legs and show our handle heart shape to true and perform hot reload, you can see that how it transformed our clock. Anyways, let's set them to false again. Now I'm gonna control click on the clock to go to its definition and there we go. So now we learn that the clock class is hosted inside of clock.dot file. So our clock is nothing but a stateful widget. And then we have all these properties like circle color, show bells and legs, bell color, etc. Moving on, we have this get system time, which is responsible for getting the current time, and then that value is passed to the current time variable. Alright. Then we have this times variable which is extremely important as it is responsible for updating the UI with the current time. Try removing this line and hot restart the app. You will understand its importance. Moving on, this date time variable is what is passed to clock hands, which then position themselves on the clock according to the time. All of this will make more sense as we move on. Alright, now we are in the build method and we have an aspect ratio widget. Then its child are depending upon a condition. If the user wants to show bells and legs, bells and legs are drawn using the bells and legs painter, but in this case we just don't want it. So to simplify the code, I'm going to remove the unnecessary part and that's it. This build clock circle is what's responsible for building our clock. Inside of build clock circle, we have a container whose width is set to double dot infinity to have maximum width possible. And then we have some decoration over it. Eventually we are going to change all that, so ignore everything for now and come to its style which is the clock face widget. It takes a clock text, show our handle heart shape. This argument is what's responsible for the heart shape over the R hand. Well, I'm just gonna remove the argument from here as we won't need that at all. And then date time is passed. This is the same date time variable that contains the value of current date time. By the way, 
You can remove all the code from below as we won't be drawing any belts and legs anymore. So now I'm inside of clockface.dart and as you can see that clockface is just a stateless widget that has three properties. First one is date time, then clock text, and then show heart shape. Well, we won't need that. So instead of setting it to false, I'm just going to remove it from here as well, just like that. And it has caused some error, but we'll go over that later. Now here we have the padding widget at the very top and it has some padding. Then it's styled as an aspect ratio widget with aspect ratio set to one. Then we have a container with width set to double dot infinity. And then there is some decoration where shape is passed as circle and color is set to white. So by now you can already see that this is the container which acts as a white circle for our clock. For example, if I change the color from white to say uh, red and reload the app, there you go. You can see that the color of the circle changes. Moving on, we have stack. Why do we have stack? Well, that's because inside of this white circle, we have three children which are rendered on top of each other. The first one is a dial painter which is responsible for painting the markings and the text around the clock. Just below we have another widget which basically draws a simple circle at the very center of the clock. So if I change its height and width, you can see it more clearly. In our case, we won't need it. So I'm simply going to remove it from here. Moving on, we have the clock hands widget. This is what's responsible for drawing the clock hands. And to these clock hands, date time is passed. Inside of clock hands, again, we have a stack. This stack is responsible for rendering all the clock hands on top of each other. So that's where we're gonna begin with. First of all, I'm gonna change the R hand. Oh, and remove this from here as well. So here we have a custom widget and its painter is set to R hand painter. And it used to take three values, now it just takes two values, namely minutes and hours. And we extract those two from our date time variable. Now let's go into R hand painter class. Now inside of R hand painter class, I'm gonna remove the show hard shape variable and then I'm gonna remove that from here as well. Okay. So now we are left with hours and minutes. If you have previously worked with custom painters, you might know that when we extend a custom painter class, we have to override two methods, paint and should repaint. So inside of our paint method, radius is defined and then the data that we receive in the form of hours and minutes is utilized here. By the way, you can see here that in order to rotate the clock hands, we have to rotate the entire canvas that they recite in. And that's exactly what we are doing here. Although we don't need to touch any of that code. So coming down, we have our path variable. Now here's where we need to make some changes. So first, I'm gonna remove this if block and make some changes here as well. But currently what I'm gonna do is change this color value to this and change the style to stroke and set its stroke width to 6.0. Okay, so after a hot reload, you can see that what all those changes did to our, our hand. Now, if you look at the finished version, we don't need a complex shape. We simply need a line so I'm going to go back and remove all these points. Also make sure to remove path.close as we don't need to close our path since now we are only dealing with a single line. Now I'm going to change the arguments that are passed to our move to function. Before doing that, you need to understand that these hands are drawn from extreme out to center, which means that from here to here. So just look at this point and I'm going to say move to 0.0 comma minus radius into 0.5. So this brings the origin point right here. And then from here, we draw a line to the radius by saying path.line to 0.0, .0 and radius into 0.1. Now change the stroke cap to round. Now let's reload and there we go. We have our desired hand. Now I'm gonna move on to the minute hand and here as well, I'm first gonna change the painting style to stroke, change its color, set its stroke cap to round and width to five. Then I'm gonna remove all these coordinates and simply change the move to coordinates, keeping the line to coordinates same as earlier. And that's it. Now perform a hot reload and there we go. We have our minute hand as well. Now I'm gonna go to the second hand. In here, you can see that it already is a line because its painting style is set to stroke. So all we need to change here is the color and width just like that. And I'm gonna also set its stroke cap to round. Also notice that in the second hand painter class, we have two different paint variables, second hand paint and second hand points paint. The second hand points paint is what draws the circles on the second hand. I'm going to change the color for second hand points paint to triple F 0764 and it's styled to fill. Also inside of paint method, you can see that we have two paths, path one and path two. So path one is the path for our hand to be drawn on. So I'm simply going to change its move to and write 0, 0, minus radius into 0, 
and then draw a line to point 0, comma, radius into point 1. Now we only need one of those two circles and we want the one at the center. Remove that and reload the app. Alright, so that's it. We have the hands of our clock. Now let's change the structure of our clock a little bit. First off, what I'm going to do is go into clockface.dart and come over to this container and change its color to our desired color just like that and reload the app. Then if you look at the target, there are two circles inside of the clock. There's an outer circle and there's an inner circle which is smaller in radius. So we also have two circles, the outer black one and the inner one. So fortunately for us, we won't have to make a circle on our own. But how are we going to achieve what we need? So let's first start by changing the appearance of the outer circle. So for that, I'm going to go to main.dart and remove every argument from here. Then I'm going to go back to clock.dart and remove all unnecessary variables such as show bells and legs, bell color, leg color, handle heart shape, etc. Then we're going to change the circle color to double F, E1, E, C, F7. Now let's reload and there we go. We have our outer circle as well. Currently in our clock, the outer circle contains the inner circle and the inner circle contains everything. We're going to need to change that because in order to achieve this layout, what we're going to have to do is set stack as a child of outer circle and then outer circle will have the clock hands, the markings and the inner circle all laid out on top of one another. Let me just write that to make it more clear. So I'm going to remove the clock face widget from here and I'm going to write stack children and then instead of this, I'm going to paste clock face. And then we need the clock dial painter widget. So I'm going to cut that from clock face and paste it in here. And just below the clock dial painter, I'm going to cut and paste the clock hands widget. Let me just import the libraries and remove all these errors. Alright, now let's reload. Well, everything seems to work fine except for the dial painter. So in order to make this work, I'm going to wrap it with a container and set its padding to 25 and width to double dot infinity. That's it. Now that we have every element independent of each other, I'm going to decrease the size of our inner circle by going into clockface.dart and simply decreasing the aspect ratio to 0.75. Now let's reload. And there we go. And to center this, I'm simply going to wrap the entire thing with a center widget. You can remove this child. And that's it. Moving on, let's change the dial painter. So I'm going to go inside of clockdialpainter.dart and again, there's a lot of code. But for us, the important lines of code begin from here. There is a for loop which runs 60 times to draw 60 marks. Now in our case, we only need the marks on our dial, no numbers. So it becomes even easier to do that. Just remove this if block which is responsible for writing a number after every 5 interval. Just remove it and reload the app. And there we go. You can now see that there are no numbers. Now the way these lines are drawn is at every 5th interval, a thick line is drawn and a thin line is drawn. But in our case, we simply need lines with same thickness. So I'm going to go at the top and declare two variables, final tick length and I'm going to set it to 8.0 and final tick width equals to 3.0. Then inside of the for loop, I'm simply going to remove all this code and set tick mark length equal to tick length and stroke width to tick width. Now reload the app and there we go. Our clock is almost complete. We just need to change the color and to do that, just come here and change the tick paint dot color from gray to white. Reload it once more. And there we go, we have our beautiful clock. Of course, if you compare it to the finished version, there are yet some more things left to do. Well, that's because the finished version of the clock has some more shadows applied to it on the outer and the inner circle. Let me quickly go over that as well. So first, I'm going to go inside of clock.dart and come over to build clock circle function. This container is what draws the outer circle. So I'm going to give some inner shadow to this outer circle and there's no defined way to do that. So we're going to have to use a bit of a hack here. First, just change the background color from circle color to colors.transparent. Now reload it. And you can see that the circle suddenly becomes black. Well, that's because of the box shadow that is applied to it. So now I'm going to put another box shadow with some offset and color red. Now the entire container becomes red. Well, that's because the red shadow is at the top of the black one. So I'm going to pass in a negative value for an argument called spread radius, just like this. And there we go. You can see that the black color looks like an inner shadow. Now I'm going to set the color for this shadow to be widget.circlecolor and color for this shadow to be widget.shadowcolor and then at the top I'm going to create this shadow color variable and then initialize it here and I'm going to assign new values to shadow color and circle color and that's it. Now reload it once again and there we go. We have a bit of finishing left here. You can see that the colors don't really mix well. 
So go back to the box shadows and change the blur radius for the first box shadow to 0 and the second box shadow to 10. Now let's reload it again and there we go, it looks much better. Let's quickly give some shadows to the inner circle as well. So simply go over to the clock face definition and here I'm going to write box shadow, box shadow, set its offset to 8.0 in the x-axis and set the blur radius to 13 and spread radius to 1. Also I'm going to change the color to D3E0F0 and that's it, we have our desired clock. From here begins the second part of the video, which was to make the entire UI. So the first thing that I'm going to do is modularize all the files that we have here. So I'm simply going to create a directory called clock, move all these files into that directory. I'm also going to create another directory called screens. Now we have an error in the main dot dot, let's review it. It's again the package mismatch error and there's a similar error in the clock dot dot as well. So let me quickly get rid of that and that's it. There's still a lot of code that is unused. For example, we don't need clock text dot dot anymore in the main dot dot. And even clock text dot dot has some unused code which I'm not going to go over. In fact, we are not going to need the clock dot dot in our main dot file. So now let's set up the tab view inside of our main dot dot. Right. So I'm going to remove the scaffold widget and replace it with a container. Set its height to 600 and width to double dot infinity. Then its style would be a default tab controller widget with length 3 since we need 3 tabs. Then its style would be a scaffold widget. I'm going to give it an app bar with zero elevation, transparent background color. Then I'm going to target the bottom of the app bar and give it a preferred size widget where I'm going to set the height to 55 and then its style would be container and I'm going to set its background to transparent. Then its style would be safe area, then column. Then column would have different children. So the first children would be tab bar. So now I'm going to write tabs and I'm going to give multiple tabs using the tab widget. So I'm going to set text just like that for all three of them and give it relative icon and set the icon size to 40. Alright, so I'm going to reload the app and after all this you can see that we have pretty basic tabs. Now let's change them to what we need. First of all, I'm going to make this bottom line a bit thicker by setting the indicator weight to 15. Then I'm going to change the label color to 2D386B. Then set its label style as text style, font size 12, letter spacing 1.3, font weight to font weight dot 500. Then I'm going to set the unselected label color to black 26. Okay, cool. Now we need to decrease the width of the indicator. And to do that, we simply need to target the indicator size and set it to tab indicator size dot label. And that's it. Now all we need to do is change the color of the indicator. And that could be done by targeting the indicator color. But that would not give us the kind of result that we expect since we simply want a thin line. And in order to achieve that, we would have to define our own indicator. So instead of tab bar, just target the indicator and pass underline tab indicator. Now this takes several arguments. The first one is border side. So I'm simply going to write border side, set its color to triple F0863 and width to 4. Now reload and see what do we have. Okay, it's good. But it would have been better if we could decrease the size a bit more. And we can by setting the insets. I'm going to write edge insets dot symmetric and set horizontal to 40. Now as you will reload, you will notice that we have the desired result. Now let's define the body for this scaffold. So I'm going to move all the way down to where the app bar ends and I'm going to write body, tab bar view, set its children to all the tabs that we're going to have. Right now I'm just going to write some text here, just like that. And after reloading you can see that we have complete working tab view. Alright, now I'm going to start writing some content for our tabs. So first I'm going to remove this text widget and write a center widget, which takes first tab as a child. Now let's define this first tab. So go over to screens, create a new file called first underscore screen dot dot and link it here in the main dot dot. Then go back to first screen dot dot and here I am going to import material package and the clock dot dot file. Then I am going to create a stateless widget and set the name of the class to first tab. Now instead of the build method of the first tab class, I am going to return the list view as you want the first tab to be scrollable. And then the first widget would be a size box of height 85 as we want to give some margin top from here. And then the next widget would be our clock. So I'm simply going to write clock. Now let's reload and see how it looks. It's good, but I think we should also wrap this with a padding. So I'm going to wrap it with a padding widget with and give it a symmetric padding of 15, the horizontal axis. All right. So now just below it, I'm again going to give a size box with height 85. And then I'm going to make a row. Now this row will have two children, uh, two columns actually. 
so and both of them have to be equally spaced so i'm going to write main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space evenly then inside of the children i'm simply going to write two columns and then these two columns would again have multiple children so i'm going to write cr column cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot chart i'm going to write children text and in the text i'm going to write alarm time style and style them accordingly so i'm going to write color uh, color 0 xdd f 0 863 font size to 12 i'm going to set font weight to w700 and let us spacing to 1.3 and then i'm going to give a size box of height 10 then again i'm going to write text and i'm going to write 6 12 pm give it some style as you can see here set its font size to 30 font weight to w700 and give it appropriate color then in the second column i'm going to write cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot start and children it's going to have several children so it's pro it's definitely going to have the same type of text styles and the same type of children uh, it's just that the content is different so i'm just going to copy from there and paste it over here and i'm going to write wake up in and over here i'm going to write 8 am and that's it our first screen dot dot is complete okay now we need to make the edit alarm button and the floating action button so go back to main dot dot and find the scaffold widget as the scaffold widget takes something called bottom navigation bar so i'm going to write bottom navigation bar bottom bar now what is this bottom bar well bottom bar is again a stateless widget uh, that i'm going to define over here and instead of the widget build method i'm going to return a padding so the padding is uneven so i'm going to write edge inserts dot from ltrb ltrb is from left top right bottom and i'm going to pass 50 0 50 50 then i'm going to pass in a child and that child would be a row then i'm going to say main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space between as the row would have only two children and we want both of them to have even space and to be spread across the row and then i'm going to first introduce the flat button widget and instead of the child i'm going to pass text edit alarms set its style uh, letter spacing to 1.5 then color i'm going to change the color of the button to double f 5e92 text color to white padding to edge inserts dot symmetric and vertically uh, it would be 20 and horizontally it would be 25 and now we need to give the on press button so since we are not going to be performing any action so i'm simply going to write on pressed and not going to pass anything then uh, we want that border radius so first of all let me just uh, hot reload the app and there we go you can see we have our button but we need to give it some border radius and the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to come back to flat button and i'm going to write shape rounded rectangle border and pass in the border radius uh, border radius dot circular 50 all right hot reload it once again and there we go we have the button just as we wanted it then again we have the floating action button so i'm going to pass child text plus style and i'm going to give it some style such as text style give it some color font weight and set its font weight to w700 and font size to 25 again i'm going to pass empty on press callback then i'm going to give it a background color of white foreground color black elevation 5 and highlight elevation to 3 and that's it we have completed our first screen entirely now let's move on to our second screen first instead of the main dot dart just come over here and call for second tab just like this then i'm going to create a new file inside of screens and call it second screen dot dart and then i'm going to import it inside of our main dot dart now inside of the second screen i'm going to import material dot dart then make a stateless widget and call it second tab that should get rid of all the errors that we had in main dot dot so here i have the completed version of the second tab and let me just unfold the layout it's pretty simple first we have this container with some padding then we have a list view as we want this screen to be scrollable as well and then inside of the list view we are going to have several children the first one is a row that you can see here and then this row has two children first one is a column whereas the second one is a container which contains our graphs and then inside of this column we have seven children a text then a size box then text then a size box and so on and after the row ends we have several different containers which have different data and they appear as a list right here let me quickly write all that in vs code like i said first we have a container and i'm going to give it some padding then a list view then its first child is a row row has main axis alignment set to space between then a column and here i'm simply going to copy the data and now you can see all the reds well that's because we haven't defined some variables so I'm going to come at the top here and define small font size to 12, 12 font size to 30, small font size. Small font size is responsible for little heading that appears at the top of the numbers. And then there's small font weight, well font weight. And then I'm going to set font color to 5B6990. 
small font spacing to 1.3 and that should take care of all the reds that we had in our code all right now let's run it and there we go you can see that we have got the top right portion of the second tab correct now before actually making the graph i'm first going to make the bottom portion of the screen that you see right here so outside of the row i'm going to first have size box of height 25 and then i'm going to create a container with vertical padding 10 and i'm going to give border at the bottom of the container so instead of the box decoration i'm going to write border bottom border side give it this color and then set the border width to 1.5 moving on i'm going to set a column as its style and i'm going to set its cross axis alignment to start and then i'm going to start giving it some children so here at the top we just need a text say thursday and then i'm going to give it some style so I'm going to say textile font size 16, font weight W700 and uh, set its color to underscore font color, the variable that we defined previously. And then the next style would be a size box of height 15. And then I'm going to write a row. Uh, and this row would take two children's first, uh, actually three children's. The first one would be text, which contains our date, then style. Uh, and I'm going to give it some style. I'm going to set the font size to 13, font weight to font weight dot W400. Letter spacing to small font spacing and color to font color. Then I'm going to write size box of width 25. Now I'm going to introduce expanded widget which takes text as a child and I'm going to pass 45.3 minutes. I'm just going to write 45.3 minutes. Give it a style, text style, font size 13, font weight, set its font weight to W400 and I'm going to set its letter spacing to underscore small font spacing and color to font color. All right, that's it. Let's see how it looks. Well, it looks fine. Now we need multiple one of those. So I'm not going to write all that code over and over again. So what I'm going to do is extract this widget and call it record item. All the variables are passed as we desired except for one. So I want to show different days for every item. And since we are not using any dynamic component like listview.builder, hence we're going to have to do it manually. So here I'm going to write another argument named day and pass Thursday. And then over to its definition, I'm going to declare a final variable named day and then initialize it just like that and over here i'm going to exchange the hard-coded value for day with the variable all right now i'm going to copy and paste this several times and change the value of day in all of them and that's it let's reload there we go we have nearly completed our ui let's start working on the graph so first of all where will the graphs live in or who would be its parent well it would be a container so come back inside of the row right about here where the column ends and I'm going to make a container with height 200, width 200 and I'm going to set its decoration just like that. I'm going to give it some color and I'm going to give it a border of width 8 and color, a very light color, just like this. And I'm going to write border radius, border radius dot circular 3. Then I'm going to give it a padding of 15 units and I'm going to pass a child called column. Now this column would contain three children, a text, a size box and the container which contains our graph. So before passing the children inside of the column, I'm going to write cross axis alignment, cross axis alignment dot start. Then I'm going to start off by saying text this week, style, text style, and I'm going to give font size as underscore small font size, font weight to small font weight, and set letter spacing to small font spacing and color to font color. We just utilized all the variables that we declared earlier. Then I'm going to write a size box of height 15. And after the size box, I'm going to make another container with height 120, set its padding to 10 horizontally and width to double dot infinity. Now from here, the real work begins. I'm going to give custom paint as a child for our container and then set its foreground painter to graph painter. Now I'm going to come over here and define this graph painter. So I'm going to write class graph painter extends custom painter. Now we need to override two methods just like that. I'm going to set the should repaint to false as we won't be animating the graph. Now making this is quite simple. All we have to do is paint five different lines at equal distances. And actually we are gonna need to print 10 different lines. The ones at the background with the same height and the ones on the foreground with different heights. So since we need to paint two things, I'm gonna create two paint variables. First one is gonna be called track bar paint. And this is what's responsible for drawing the track bar in the foreground with different height. And then I'm going to make track paint. This is responsible for painting the track or the bars in the background. Now remember, these track bars are nothing but lines with stroke cap set to round just like the clock hands. So instead of track bar paint, I'm going to write dot dot color equal color uh, FF818AAB 
and style equal painting style dot stroke and I'm gonna set the stroke cap as round and stroke width to 12. By the way, if you don't know what this dot dot means, it's just a shorthand method for writing track bar paint dot color. So instead of writing it like that, that allows us to write it in a shorter form. And I'm gonna copy all these exact same values over here and just change the value of color. Now let's draw them. I'm gonna define two path variables, path track path and path track bar path. For now, we are just gonna work with track path. And I'm gonna write track path dot move to 8 comma size dot height. So this brings the origin point here. And then I'm going to draw a line keeping the x axis same but changing the value of y axis to 0. Alright, now I'm going to write canvas dot draw path, track path, and track paint and reload the app. There we go. You can see that we now have this light colored bar right here. Now to draw another one, all you have to do is change the x axis inside of the move to function and then draw the lines once more. Anyways, for now I'm going to make the bar in the foreground. So now I'm going to write track bar path dot move to 8 comma size dot height. So now the pointer is right at the bottom. And then from the bottom we draw it upwards to size dot height into 0.5. Now let's draw that on the canvas. So I'm going to write canvas dot draw path track bar path comma track bar paint. That's it. Now let's reload. And there we go. We have got the first bar ready. So in a nutshell we are just drawing these bars from bottom to top. Alright. Now to make 5 of them, I'm going to make use of a for loop. So at the top of the paint method, first I'm going to make a list variable called val. And then I'm going to write 5 different values for each bar relative to size or height. Then I'm going to create a variable called origin and set it to 8. Just like that. Now in here, I'm going to write for int i equals 0, i less than val dot length i plus plus. And instead of this for loop, I'm going to first paint the background bars by writing track bar dot move to origin comma size dot height then i'm going to write track path dot line to origin comma zero and then we need to dynamically change the value of origin as well otherwise all these bars would be drawn on top of each other so i'm going to write origin equals to origin plus size dot width into 0.22 all right let's take a look and there we go you can see that we have five different bars now i'm going to paint the bars in the foreground so i'm going to write track bar path dot move to origin comma size dot height track bar path dot line to origin comma val i and let's reload it once more and there we go we finally have the desired ui that we required there's nothing in the third tab as this video was not about making an entire app it's just a tutorial on making complex and custom layout in flutter so i hope you liked the video and learned something new today if you did like the video then express that by commenting down below or liking the video because your support is what keeps me going also share this video to your colleagues your friend who you think would be benefited from this video. In the next video, we are going to make this cool looking UI in Flutter. This would be a tutorial on achieving parallax in Flutter. And all this is done without using any external library. So subscribe to this channel if you are new or hit that bell icon if you already haven't in order to receive the notification for the next video as soon as it's uploaded. So stay tuned.